Good day everyone, I am Crystal Amihido. I'll be reporting the second part of this chapter. I will discuss to you through this video the liquidity, the income tax considerations, the summary of chapter 6, and its application. First off is liquidity. A definition by Investopedia, it refers to the ease with which an asset or a security that can be converted into ready cash without affecting its market price. It is another attribute of a bond that influences it, its interest rates. As discussed in the chapter 4 of the book, a liquid asset is, the, is an asset that can be quickly, easily, and cheaply converted into cash when the need arises. Also, the more liquid an asset is, the more desirable it is. The U.S. Treasury bond is an example of an instrument that has a high liquidity. This is because it is widely traded and it sells quickly. Also, the cost of selling it is quite low. Meanwhile, the corporate bond is not as liquid as the U.S. Treasury bond. This is because it is not. This is because it is not widely traded. It can be costly to sell this in an emergency because finding buyers for it might be quite hard. As mentioned earlier, liquidity affects interest rates. Now, how does this exactly affect interest rates? Specifically, how does the reduced liquidity of the corporate bonds affect their interest rates relative of that, the interest rate of treasury bonds? We can use the supply and demand analysis used to analyze the default risk in the previous discussion by Ms. Bandong. Let's start by assuming that the U.S. Treasury bonds and the corporate bonds are equally liquid and has the same attributes and just like having the same energy. As seen in the figure, their equilibrium prices and interest rates will initially be equal. You can see the PC1 to, I mean PC1 equals to PT1. Because corporate bonds are less widely traded than the treasury bond, this obviously makes the demand for the corporate bond fall, shifting its demand curve to the left from DC1 to DC2. This in turn results for the demand curve of the treasury bond shift to the right from DT1 to DT2. This is because the treasury bond has become more liquid as the corporate bond becomes less liquid, thus making the treasury bond more desirable. The shifts in the curves in the figure shows that the price for the less liquid corporate bond falls while its interest rate rises. Meanwhile, the price for the more liquid treasury bond rises and its interest rate falls. You can see an inverse relationship between the treasury bond and the corporate bond. Now, this is the result of the rise of the spread of the interest rates between the two bonds or the risk premium as discussed in the default risk. Next is the income tax consideration. To give you a little bit of information about what consideration is, there is no legal definition of the word consideration, but the EU has legislated, um, but however, this legislation has been repelled but still is widely used. The definition states that consideration means everything received in return for the supply of goods or the provision of services, including incidental expenses such as packing, transport, insurance, etc. That is to say not only the cash amounts charged but also, for example, the value of goods received in exchange or in the case of goods or services, supplied by other or by order of public authority, the amount of the compensation received. Returning to the figure 1 on the default risk, we are still left with the question of why municipal bonds have lower interest rates than the treasury bond, when it is not as liquid compared to treasury bond. The explanation lies in the fact that the interest rates on municipal bonds are exempt from federal income taxes a factor that has the same effect on the demand for municipal bonds as an increase in their expected return. Here's a simple example. Let us assume that you have a high income that is enough to put you in a 35% income tax bracket, and in every dollar you earn, you pay 35 cents to the government. Now, what if you invest in a treasury bond that sells for $1,000 and has a coupon payment of $100, also has a 10% interest rate? Now, you only earn 6.5 after taxes, although the treasury bond has a 10% interest rate. Meanwhile, if you invest in a municipal bond, the same as the treasury bond sells for $1,000, 
and has a coupon payment of only $80. But since the municipal bond is a tax exempt security, you pay no taxes on the coupon payment of $80. And so you earn a 8% after taxes. Now, this is the reason why people are willing to hold a more riskier and less liquid municipal bond than the treasury bond, which is more liquid because the municipal bond has a higher return. Another way of understanding why municipal bonds have lower interest rates than the U.S. Treasury bond is by using the supply and demand curve analysis depicted in the figure 3 in the book. Same as earlier is what I have discussed in the liquidity, we will initially assume that the municipal bonds and the U.S. Treasury bond has the same attributes and has equal bond prices and interest rates. As you can see, PM1 equals to PT1. As stated earlier, municipal bond is a tax-exempt security. This gives it an advantage resulting for a higher tax return. Now, this results for the, for the municipal bond to become more desirable, thus shifting its demand curve to the right from DM1 to DM2. The equilibrium bond price rises for the municipal bond and its interest rate falls. By contrast, treasury bond has now become less desirable, shifting its demand curve to the left from DT1 to DT2, leading to a price fall of the treasury bond and the interest rate increases. This explains why municipal bond is, this is more desired by people and has a lower interest rate than the U.S. Treasury bond. Now let me summarize the contents of the chapter. The chapter discusses the restructure of interest rates, the relationship among interest rates on bonds with the same maturity. It is explained by three factors. The default risk, which was discussed by Ms. Bandong, liquidity, and the income tax treatment of a bond's interest payments. As a bond default risk increases, the risk premium on that bond as discussed earlier, which is the spread between its interest rate and the interest rate on a default-free treasury bond prices. The greater liquidity of a treasury bonds also explains why their interest rates are lower than those on less liquid bonds. If a bond has a favorable tax treatment, as do municipal bonds, as earlier, whose interest rates payments are exempt from federal income taxes, its interest rate will be lower. Moving on to the last topic of this video discussion is the application, the effects of the Bush tax cut and its possible repel on the interest or the bond interest rates. The Bush tax cut passed in 2001 scheduled a reduction of the top income tax bracket from 39% to 35% over a 10-year period. The question is, what is the effect of this income tax decrease on interest rates in the municipal bond market relative to those on the treasury bond market? The supply and demand analysis that I have discussed earlier provides the answer. A decreased income tax rate for wealthy people means that the after-tax return for the municipal bonds, which is a tax-exempt security, has now become lower relative to that on treasury bond because now the treasury bond has also taxed at a lower rate. Now that the municipal bonds have become less desirable, this obviously decreases their demand. Now, this results to a shift in the demand curve to the left. This resulting for the lower price of the municipal bond thus increases their interest rate. Conversely, for the treasury bond, a lower tax rate increases their demand, shifting their demand curve to the right. This results for the increase of price of the treasury bond, thus lowering their interest rates. For the possible repel of the Bush tax cut, we can just simply reverse our analysis earlier. A higher tax rate would raise the after-tax return of the tax-exempt municipal bonds relative to that of the treasuries. A possible repel of the Bush tax cut would result for the municipal bond to increase its desirability, thus shifting its demand curve to the right increasing its demands. This results for a higher price and lower interest rates. Conversely, for the treasury bond, this would, this would decrease the demand for the treasury bond, shifting its demand curve to the left. 
this results for a lower price and thus higher interest rates. Higher tax rates would thus result for the municipal bond to have a lower interest rate relative to that on the treasury bond. So this is how the supply and demand analysis can be applied in the change of interest rates. That is the end of my discussion. Hope you enjoyed and learned something. Thank you for listening. God bless everyone and keep safe.